Hello, and thank you for looking at my video on my YouTube page. My name is Jamal Jones. I'm an attorney at Jones Health Law. And uh, today I'd like to discuss uh, multidisciplinary practices, some of the legal considerations and potential pitfalls for setting up a multidisciplinary practice. Multidiscipline medical practices have become increasingly attractive to doctors of chiropractic over the past several years as a means of maintaining and increasing revenues which have otherwise been or might be reduced through the belt tightening practices by insurance companies in the areas of personal injury and workers compensation and exclusion from health maintenance plans such as HMOs, PPOs, etc. The multidiscipline practice concept involves integration of a medical practice into the practice maintained by a doctor of chiropractic. This type of combined practice can become a very effective means of expanding a chiropractor's patient base and production of, of additional revenue, but can also come with some serious potential legal liability. There are a number of reasons why a doctor of chiropractic may be interested in integrating his or her practice with the practice of a medical doctor. Two big advantages of boarding chiropractors through the DCMD integration of practices are the expanded patient marketing capabilities made available to the chiropractor and the doctor's ability to offer more health care services and opportunities to his or her patients of equal or perhaps greater interest to most DCs electing to integrate their chiropractic practice with that of a medical doctor is the opportunity to obtain additional financial benefit through a business relationship with the medical doctor's practice. The business relationship, which is created through a multidiscipline discipline practice, whether it be by simple office sharing arrangement or a carefully construction, constructed management service agreement utilizing lease agreements and management service contracts, ultimately promotes superior in-depth healthcare analysis and provider response capability. In many, if not most combined practice arrangements, the doctor of chiropractic is also able to increase his or her income by providing administrative services to the physician's medical practice and thereby indirectly participating in the revenues generated by the medical practice. The principal impediment to the combined DC-MD practice, or it can be DC-DO, uh, DC-MD-PT, there's a, any number of combinations of these um, multidisciplinary practices that can exist, is the long-standing prohibition in some states against the corporate practice of medicine. You have to look at your state to determine what the uh, prohibitions are there. While it is against the law for an MD or a DC to split fees in the form of a kickback for the, refer for the referral of a healthcare patient, because there exists no limitation in the corporate practice of chiropractic, a doctor of chiropractic can legally share fees he or she earns through his or her professional practice with a non-chiropractor, but that's not the case with a medical doctor. Again, these rules may vary depending on the state that you're in. A medical doctor may only associate or share fees earned through his or her medical practice with another medical doctor to do otherwise violates the prohibition against the corporate practice of medicine by subjecting a physician's medical judgment to control by a non-physician. Thus, while a chiropractor entering into an integrated practice arrangement with a medical doctor may be, liable, may be able to jointly treat patients and co-market the practice with the physician, he or she cannot own any interest in the physician's professional association or medical practice or directly participate in the revenues generated through the medical practice. A properly crafted DCMD multidiscipline integrated practice provides a means to lawfully achieve these otherwise unattainable ends. In the DCMD multidisciplinary practice, Ownership of a physician's professional association may be maintained, in some cases, by an absentee owner physician who employs a worker physician on site at the practice's clinic or by the on site worker physician himself. 
Both ownership formats impose unique legal considerations in the formation of the multidisciplinary practice. While an absentee owner physician may provide more assurance that the physician with whom the DC has chosen to integrate his or her practice may not someday walk off with a successful integrated practice, Organizations utilizing this format generally attract closer regulatory scrutiny. At least one chiropractor that I know of, uh, not personally, has gone to jail because of the unauthorized use of an absentee owner physician's medical provider number for patient billing. The on-site worker physician format should provide a more stable and legally secure operating working environment but may afford the chiropractor with, a less, with less protection from a greedy owner physician should the integrated relationship begin to sour. In order to create a means by which the chiropractor may legally derive some financial benefit through the revenues generated by the associated medical practice, a third factor must be introduced, the formation of a management service company, or we call an MSO. Since ownership in an MSO is not restricted to the licensed professionals, anyone may possess an ownership interest and thus share in the profits of the MSO's management enterprise. The, MS the MSO may be owned in total or in part by the participating chiropractor. Ownership may also include the physician, though this is not generally a good idea. Integration with the physician's practice is accomplished through a series of interlocking contracts between the MSO and the Physician's Professional Association. This contractual relationship typically includes a management services contract, a premise lease agreement, and equipment leases as necessary. Through these contractual relationships, various administrative services are provided by the MSO to the physician's practice. While the contractual relationship may not in any way delegate any degree of control or responsibility over the physician's medical practice to the MSO, it does enable the owners of the MSO to share in a portion of the revenues generated by the medical practice through the payment of service fees for the management services provided. All management services provided by the MSO must be services which are necessary to the operation of the medical practice. The, the fees charged for the management services must reflect actual market value for similar services rendered in the specific locale of the practice. While the total fee package paid by the medical, medical practice to the MSO may not be based entirely on an aggregate per, uh, percentage of the medical practice's gross or net collections or profits, thereby violating the prohibitions against free, uh, fee splitting, the fee package may incorporate a specific percentage of the medical practices uh, collections. Generally, from what I've seen, that's usually in the 15 to 25% range, with the balance of the service charges calculated on a per unit or cost plus basis. Periodic adjustments of the services of the service charges may be done to properly update the appropriate administrative services rendered as the medical map, uh, practice grows. Any DC, MD, or other um, coupling uh, of medical providers must include employment contracts between the professional and the participating entities. These employment arrangements may also take different formats. The worker physician and chiropractor may elect either employee or employer, excuse me, employee or independent contractor status with the medical clinic. Should the chiropractor elect to become an employee of the medical clinic, the state usually affords the physician the right to delegate the provisions of those professional services within the scope of the chiropractor's license to the chiropractor. Supervision by the physician is required under this relationship and the physician maintains ultimate responsibility for the doctor-patient relationship. While some multidisciplinary program promoters construe this type of employment relationship to authorize the physician to bill those professional services rendered by the DC or chiropractor as, as physician services, 
a highly cautionary approach to this me methodology is advised. Um, for example, in the certain boards, uh, like the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, maintains that any service provided by a licensed chiropractor, whether in association with a medical doctor or not, should reflect the treating chiropractor as a physician rendering the healthcare service and should utilize the chiropractic provider number and appropriate chiropractic CPT code. This is the safest and most prudent approach and should not affect the multidiscipline practice's ability to recover appropriate fees or services rendered. Interested chiropractors, multidisciplinary practitioners should note that insurance billing discrepancies are the quickest way to invite regulatory oversight and investigations. Should the chiropractor elect to serve the medical practice as an independent contractor, he or she will be able to provide the same type of professional services, but must also assume responsibility for the doctor-patient relationship established through the chiropractor treatment. Under this type of association, all chi uh, chiropractor professional services must be coded and billed independently as chiropractic services. Any bill purporting to reflect an independent contractor chiropractor services as physician services may be construed to constitute ins insurance fraud. So you want to be careful of that. Thus, any chiropractor contemplating an integrated multidiscipline discipline practice with a medical doctor must give, must give careful consideration to the type of employment range relationships he or she wishes to maintain in the practice relationship. Two additional areas which may cause problems in an integrated practice are Medicare, Medicaid, and the use of physician standing orders. Any chiropractor contemplating an integrated multidiscipline practice is advised to avoid both areas of practice if possible. If the chiropractor is determined to treat Medicare patients, he or she must be extremely careful to properly document all treatment notes and ensure proper coding of all billings by the medical practice. Be aware that under Medicare guidelines, a supervising physician must be on site during patient treatment and patient referral relationships um, will be more cl closely scrutinized. Interested chiropractors should be aware that several multidiscipline programs utilize physician standing orders as a means to circumvent the employment of an on-site worker physician. While physician standing orders are acceptable with the medical community in appropriate uh, circumstances, use of physician standing orders to avoid an attending physician's regular attendance at the medical clinic will be a red flag to government regulators. The DC MD multidisciplinary practice can be a very useful tool in expanding the chiropractor's practice. Any chiropractor who is interested in pursuing the multidisciplinary type of practice is advised to carefully review the legal structure of the program he or she is interested in, util uh, in utilizing with an experienced attorney such as myself. A carefully thought out, well-considered approach prior to commencing such an undertaking should include proper compliance with all aspects of Florida and federal legal guidelines or the state that you reside in. Approaching integration of your practice in this manner will ensure enjoyment of the long-term benefit offered through a multidiscipline type of practice. I want to take this time to thank you for looking at my video. If you found this of interest to you and you'd like to explore setting up a multidisciplinary practice or if you have questions about your practice that already exists, you can contact me at jrj at joneshealthlaw.com. You can visit my website at joneshealthlaw.com or you can call me on my office at 305-877-5054. If it's urgent, you can reach me on my cell at 917-912-8108. Thank you for looking at my video.